in this uh, example, uh, this uh, um, uh, series of code that I have written to explain what uh, f functions in hierarchy, what they are, and how they work, <clears throat> and it and it worked pretty well. So I am I am going to use that, and um, this is where everything goes very quick, actually, much quicker than the weekly schedule that we have. In our weekly schedule, I'm supposed to teach functions in hierarchy. Let me just show it to you. So, so I'm supposed to talk about functions in hierarchy. Then I'm going to talk about virtual base classes and derived. So you will see that everything is going to go in two sessions. So by the, net, the end of the, the lab, the next day you are coming in, even with, or maybe the next session that you're, they're all covered. So we can actually know every, everything about it. And it's a very uh, cool feature that we have uh, with uh, uh, C++ language, uh, which is essentially uh, down to this point, what, did, uh, what was the three pillars of object orientation? What was the three pillars of object orientation? Remember that? Three things. Ab uh, abstraction. Abstraction is actually the fourth. Abstraction is for any language. For any language, you need to have abstraction. So polymorphism, inheritance, and anyone else? Encapsulation. Encapsulation. That's it. Encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. Which one of which ones of them we talk, we talked about? We talked about inheritance. Well, we talked about encapsulation. That was the very first thing, putting the data and behavior together. Then we talked about poly polymorphism, back and forth, which is like a, we can have several functions with the, with, uh, with the same name and different signatures, and we call that polymorphism. And I told you it is polymorphism, but it's kind of fake polymorphism because behind the scene it actually renames the function, but it doesn't matter. So we kind of know what polymorphism and encapsulation are, but we have not done anything about inheritance, and that's going to start today. So the third pillar of object orientation, the third uh, important aspect of object orientation we need to know, we are going to talk about today. So so. I'm going to go to the folder that we have, and in here I'm going to say paste. First, let's talk about the syntax of inheritance. What does it mean, like the syntax of inheritance? What does it mean to actually have inheritance? Remember that I told you, <clears throat> um, I talked about, when I gave example, I said, Bicycle and motorcycle. Motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. Remember that? We said motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. So a motorcycle is a bicycle. Everybody knows what a bicycle is? <laughs> Everybody knows what a motorcycle is, right? A motorcycle, you don't pedal. You just, and it goes, right? So, but with a bicycle, you have to pedal, right? So what do we do? We take a bicycle. We say, this is too difficult, and I'm like, you know, healthy but too difficult, so I'm going to put some engine on it. And now I have uh, either an electric, motor, uh, electric bicycle or uh, uh, a motorcycle, right? So what I have is a bicycle. So I have a class bicycle. That's embarrassing. How do you write bicycle? OK. So, <laughs> so, so, class, so I have class bicycle, right? And the class bicycle of mine has some specifications, whatever, I don't care, right? Uh, public, um, I don't know, um, bicycle. Integer size, whatever. I, or yeah, just, just like that, that's it, okay? Now, <clears throat> now I have a class engine, right? So I have a class engine. OK? And the engine of mine has some power or something. And it's public. English speakers, please uh, correct my spelling. So I have an integer, I don't know, power, something like that, right? Whatever, OK? So that's that. Now I want to have a motorcycle. 
Okay. Motorcycle is a bicycle that has an engine. One more time. Motorcycle is a, now I'm doing, putting it in a double quote, is a bicycle that has an engine. So, is a is inheritance. Has a is just property. Okay? I am, or I want to say is a, I'm not going to go am a. He is a human being. He has glasses. You follow the difference? He is a human being. He has glasses. He is not glasses. He has one, right? Right? He has a pair. Okay, so, so it's the same thing over here. So in here, if I want to do something like this, now in here I have to say class, motorcycle, okay? I'm going to say is a bicycle that has an engine. That's the syntax, ladies and gentlemen. So when you put a public, we have different types of, we have different types of, why is it giving, oh, bicycle. We have we have different types of inheritance, but for us, it's only public. We can inherit publicly. We can in public inheritance, protected inheritance, private inheritance. Um, that's that. And you didn't know even uh, in class, in class uh, access modifiers, we have the same thing too. We have public, we have pr private, and soon I'm going to tell you that we have protected too that you didn't know actually we have because we didn't ever talked about uh, inheritance. We'll come to it soon. But anyways, if has a relationship, you're saying motorcycle is a bicycle, has an engine. Does that, is that clear for everyone? Do we understand this? Okay. When you do something like this, motorcycle we have, will have everything that bicycle has. So if, I, if bicycle has two wheels, then motorcycle will have two wheels. If bicycle has a steering wheel, the motorcycle will have a steering wheel. But bicycle did not have an engine. Motorcycle has one, right? And, we can, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is the syntax. So you put over here public. It means it, has, it publicly inherits everything from a bicycle. No private, no protected at our stage. That's too rich for our blood. Only public at the moment. Okay? So knowing that syntax, <clears throat> let's talk about an animal. We don't want Q, we don't want stack. We want to go OP244. Four, four. Notes, DB, animal, DCX Braj. Oh. <clears throat> oh, it's actually 2019, but uh, it's okay. Um, you know what? Let me do something in here. I'm going to say remove. I'm just going to open it here separately and update it and then close it because uh, I want it to be the latest version. I don't want you to get warnings on your. So upgrade, OK. Save everything. And All right, so hopefully now it's good. Is it the one? Yeah, let's open it one more time.
So I have uh, I have a class called animal in here. Now the animal class of mine represent what an animal is with my abstraction. What was abstraction? The view I need from something. Whatever the view of, whatever my need of that object is, is my abstraction of that object. Remember I told you a student from OSAP office is a completely different entity than a student from uh, administration office. Two different things. One is an entity that owes money, the other one is an entity that gets marks. Right? Two different things. Okay, so the abstraction is different. So my abstraction of an animal is something like this. So an animal has a name, okay? An animal has a name. I'm going to take these things off. I can get animal's name. It's a query. And I can set an animal's name. It's a modifier. An animal can act, move, make a, make a sound. And I have over here an uh, uh, tilde animal for, for destructor just to show messages of when these things are getting created and deleted. Okay? So, in my view, an animal is something that has a name. And it can act, move, and make a sound. I can set its name, get its name, and it has a constructor, and if I don't put anything, it's a nameless animal. Are we good? Easy, right? So that's an animal of mine. <coughs> so, I'm making everything ready, so the next one's not gonna be for surprise. So if I actually go to my tester, Okay, so, and by the way, as you see inside my animal.cpp over here, inside my animal.cpp, I have a Boolean. What is the scope of this Boolean? Let me take, actually, um, let, me, let me have those things over here in case you want to enable them. I'm, I, I commented it because I don't want to deal with it now. But it's a good idea to have it if you want to uncomment and see how it works. Okay? So I have, what is the, 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 the scope of this uh, uh, variable called debug? What is the scope? Uh, oh, um, no. What is the scope of, the scope of that debug? Oh. Remember, anybody remembers? Huh? File scope. It's file scope. It's not global. It is file scope, which means it's only visible in animal.cpp, right? I don't want that. I want this debug to be global, to be visible anywhere animal.h is included. So what do I do? If you have a function and you want the function to be accessible in other files, what do you do? You create a prototype for it, right? And put it in a header file. You create a prototype and put it in a header file, and that function can be called in other files, correct? Friend? No, not friend. <laughs> not friend. But what I'm saying, when you have a function, I'm talking C language, not C++. There is no friends, friends thingy. If you have a function inside a file, you want that function to be accessible in other, in other files, you create a prototype, you put in a header file, correct? A prototype for a global variable looks like this. It's exactly like a prototype. You write extern, you put the exact same name of the variable. So if you say extern bool debug, you are telling to whoever is including animal that there is a file scope variable somewhere called debug that you can access. So this essentially becomes, I'm going to say, works like a prototype for a file scope variable to make it global. So, so when we say global variables, global variables don't exist unless you make them global using extern. 
So if you actually look, go to I, I stream and o, if you go to um, I, I stream header file and O stream header file, if you go to the header file over there and take a look, you gotta see they have there is an external I stream C out a C in an external O stream C out. So you can use the C and C out everywhere you are, wherever you are. How do you access them? They are externalized. So you can use those var those objects, those variables somewhere. It's the same thing over here. So I made it like this, so I can turn debugging on and off in my main program, so I can see the messages inside the constructors, so I can see what happens. So if you look at my animal over here, animal.cpp, what it does, it simply says, <coughs> I have an animal, and I'm setting the name of the animal, okay? To something and in here I'm gonna say if debug then show this message so if I set the debug to true it's gonna show the messages while it's getting created so I can see how the program is getting executed in main I can set the debug to false or true and turn off and on all the messages that's one of the methods of doing it there are so many other ways of doing it that I'm gonna teach you soon okay so <clears throat> uh, Act, I'm going to say act like animal, move, move like animal, sound, sound like animal, and when the destructor is gone, I'm going to say removing something, the animal, whatever the animal is. So now I'm going to go in my main program, and in my main, I'm going to say debug is true, and I'm going to run the program, and as you see, I'm going to run the program, one by one it's going to get uh, created, so I'm going to go like that there we go. now I'm gonna bring it left and this one's gonna go right and we run the program debug is true now it has access to debug why because it's including animal.h and there is an external over there so by saying debug is true I am actually setting the debug variable inside animal.cpp to true are we good all right so now <clears throat> in here it's gonna say uh, it's going to, assignment at the moment of creation is what? One argument constructor, 2% final test. Okay. All right. So uh, now I'm going to go F11. So it goes in here. Now the name over here, uh, obviously it first gets nullified because I put a, a empty curly bracket. First it sets it to null. Then it sets the name. And when it sets the name, it calls the, uh, my utilities utsdr copy to, to do the, the string copy. We'll see what is that soon. So it's my utilities uh, for string copy stuff. Okay, so it comes out. And now debug says creating Buffy the animal. It comes out. And now in here it's going to say creating nameless the animal because it's defaulted. And I'm going to say B is equal to A because nothing is implemented, nothing's going to get called. B becomes A, there is no resources, it's got to get copied. A, act, act like an animal, move like an animal, sound like an animal, and show animal A, it goes up over here, shows the animal Buffy and returns X, comes back over here and removing Buffy the animal and so on and so forth. All right? So that's a very simple animal I created and we see how it worked. Are we okay with this? Okay. I'm not going to, at home, what I want you to do is this. I want you to go at home, uncomment these guys over here, okay? Uncomment the copy constructor and assignment operator. I'm just going to do it and show you what's going to happen, okay? So this is that, okay? So I, I, I uncommented that, and I'm going to uncomment this one too. So now I have rule of three set up for this, right? Now I have rule of three set up for this. I'm going to come in main, and I'm going to remove the ampersand over here and ampersand over here, correct? And I'm going to remove that const because I don't need a constant constant thingy uh, because it's by value. I don't need to make it constant, okay? Now I'm going to make the debug false and run the program. So as you see, nothing happens. Same thing, right? Look at the number of things, right? Now. I'm going to make this one true, and hell is going to break loose. Take a look.
the number of things happen beside the thing. So copy, copy. So two copies happened over here. And uh, I do have an assignment too. Setting, setting. So two assignments, two copy, and so many things happening beside behind the scene. Right? Why? Because just I have a function and I was careless and I just passed everything over here by value. If I actually make this one pass by reference, take a look at the difference. It's the same thing. Look. Now you understand what is the difference between passing by value and passing by reference. Look at the number of things that happen. Almost nothing. Okay? So at home, have those things and walk through it and see how it works. It's really helpful. But that's not my goal now. What all I want to do over here is talk about Bruno. <laughs> all I want to do is talk about uh, uh, inheritance. So I'm going to take those two things away. Please activate it later on and see how it works. Run it, make sure it compiles. So that's my animal and everything is done. Are we good? All right. I love pets. Okay. So what if I want to have a cat? Okay. So we want to have a cat. Cat is an animal, right? Cat is an animal. What is the difference between a cat and an animal? With our respect, it's, it's, cats have name too, right? The only difference is that cats have nine lives, right? <laughs> Animals don't, <laughs> right? So, so the only thing, so cat is an animal with nine lives, right? I want to implement that. How do I do that? So as you see, I have my animal. The code may be a little different with the other one because I give examples and stuff like that, but it's essentially the same. So if I look at the animal in here, and I'm not going to talk about utils yet. I just want to, to, so as you see, there is nothing in here with copy construction and stuff. So it's clean and nice. It's just uh, the animal that I had with the exact same thing. The only difference is that something over here is protected. It's not, it's not private anymore. What is protected? Anybody over here who lived with their parents and their parents had a, had a car? You did, right? OK, you could get your father's car, right? But I can't. Why? No. <laughs> Why? Because your father's car is protected, which means members of family, descendants, children, can access it, but no one else. It's private to everyone but okay for children. That's what protected is. So I'm saying I don't want the name accessor and modifier to be private, okay? Because I want them to be private so no one can change the name of my animal. But I want cats to be able to change its own name, right? The cat object that I'm going to do later. So I'm going to make these protected. Therefore, later when I inherit a cat out of an animal, a cat can access these two. Otherwise, it couldn't have access it. Because if your father has a Porsche 911 9066 that is extremely expensive and antique type of thing, then that's not a protected vehicle. That's a private vehicle. No way in hell you're going to be able to drive that thing, right? So some things are private. You don't want your children to touch, right? Other things are protected. The children have access to them. It's the same thing over here. So <clears throat> the cat cannot directly access the name because it's private. If the cat wants to access the name, it has to go through the modifiers. And outside of cat in main outside of animal and cat or animal kingdom, no one can touch the name. The name remains what it is, what they were. So now if I come over here and take a look at my cat, my cat is an animal that has certain number of lives. Okay? 
And what do I do? I'm going to say cat's constructor accepts a name. By default, it's Garfield. OK, that was my favorite uh, animation thingy when I was young. So Garfield, so maybe some people, if Tom was the cat or Jerry? Tom is the cat. So maybe somebody wants to look at Tom. I don't know. But anyways, but number of lives by default is nine. <laughs> OK, I'll, I, I, I get a cat that was killed once, then it becomes eight, right? But so by default, it's nine. And I would say a cat can act as a cat. It can make a sound, but it cannot move like a cat. It moves like an animal. So what happens, the actions that cat override will override the parent's thing. I teach, my father teaches too. If I didn't have a teach function, then I would teach you mechanics because my father used to teach mechanics. But because I have a teach method that teaches C++, when you call my teach, I ignore my father's and mine will overwrite it. So as you see, the sound over here is the exact same thing as parents. If you look at this, the method act is exactly like this one. The method move is not implemented, so it doesn't have a move. When you tell to a cat to move, it's going to move like an animal. It didn't do any improvement to moving of an animal. But uh, what should we call it? Uh, an animal makes a sound like an animal. A cat says meow. Right? So, and cat can play. Animals don't play. That's BS, but let's, let's call it that way. That's I just added. So, so you can have additional stuff to that one. But, okay, are we okay down to this point? Okay, so now if I actually look at my cat, my cat <clears throat> works like this. If I actually look at the cat's implementation, this is how it's called. Holy mother, what did I do over there? So these are all different types of uh, uh, constructors that I can actually set. We'll, we'll go through it, but this is the, the one that I want to talk about. So remember the initialization area? the place between the open curly bracket of the constructor and the destructor, you not only can, you not only can, you not only can, let me bring this over here. You not only can initialize the member variables, but also you can initialize the parent part of you. So you're going to say, when a cat is created, pass the name to my dad, to my mom. Let that take care of it. When a cat is created, pass the name to the animal. Animal knows how to deal with it. It sets the name whatever it's supposed to do. OK? But set my number of lives this value. And then if debug. Is still, they're going to say, we're going to actually show all the stuff that we have. So this is how you initialize. Remember, if you don't put it initial, if you don't initialize them, you cannot set an animal over here. You cannot, you can, this is a mistake that rookies do. They, they bring the animal thingy in the code. You can't do that. That doesn't, remember, you cannot call a constructor. Remember the screaming at the beginning of the semester when we talked about constructors? It's not a function. You can't call it. If you do something like this, it is not going to set the animal side to anything. What's going to happen over here, this cat is going to receive a name, but the default constructor of animal will be called because I didn't mention how to create the animal. Therefore, animal will be nameless. This name will go to garbage. And then comes over here, a temporary nameless animal will get created at line 30, and line 30 and a half it will die. It has nothing to do with the animal section of the cat. Remember, you cannot call a constructor. <clears throat> OK? So I'm going to say act playful. I'll get the name of the cat. Uh, make a sound, so at, it makes a sound like an animal, and then say, says meow, and the, the cat is playing, and so on and so forth. So now if I actually 
come to the main over here, I can actually create a cat called Fluffy with five lives. Then I can say act, move, sound, and play. Move was not implemented, so the move of animal will be called. But act and sound will override. This is not overload. It's override. It will override the parent's action because they are identical. If I overloaded them, then it will be different. If act over here had a, an integer argument, then it's not the act of the father. It's not the act of the mother. It's, a, it's an overload, yes. Yeah, 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 when the time comes, you'll see, yeah. We'll, we'll, I'll show it to you when we go in. So, <clears throat> so if you want to, if you have, if, as you see, it, I'm doing it here, right? I'm saying, I'm saying, cat, when you call the sound of a cat, I want the cat first sound like an animal and then say meow. So you can explicitly say, I want the animal sound to be called. If you explicitly point to it, I want that one, not this one. Okay, you can actually do that. But if you don't mention, so if I just say sound over here, it's going to be an endless loop because it keeps calling itself until your program crashes. It's not the parents. You have to actually mention that it's parents, right? So now, if I, call, if I actually run the program over here, did I set it as startup? Start, no, set it as startup project. Now, if I run the program, as you will see, when cat gets created, it passes Fluffy in. But before anything happens, it wants to initialize the animal. So it first goes to the animal, sets the name, and you see animal's name is getting initialized first. Then the name of the animal is going to get set. It's going to say, actually, creating Fluffy the animal. And then, and then it comes back, continues the constructor of the cat, finishing the job, OK, as a cat with five lights. So what happens? The cat becomes an animal that has five lives. And now I can say act because the act overwrote, it, is, it, it did override the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the act of the animal. It goes to the cat and it's going to say act playful fluffy the cat. Then it says make a move. Move was not. Uh, Improved, so it goes to the animal. It's going to say move like animal. Then it comes and make a sound. In sound, it says first sound like an animal manually. And now say meow. Okay? <clears throat> and then play is something that the animal doesn't even have. It has nothing to do with animal. It's just an improvement. Like, like if you add a throttle to a motorcycle, it's something completely new to a bicycle. A bicycle doesn't have it. And that's a complete, the fluffy cat is playing, and uh, it ends. And when it ends, always everything dies in reverse order. First, the cat part is getting removed, and then after that, the animal, gets, animal part gets removed. Remember, everything dies in reverse order. Everything. Remember, if you have integer A, B, C, first C dies, then B, then A. Are we good? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right. <clears throat> so now that we have this, let's see what happens if you call somebody with their last name. Let me see if I have it. Let me first fix the thing to the new one. Bring it to the new one. Just a second. There you go. Okay. Save everything. All right.
Any questions down to this point? While it's fresh, I want to go further. Okay? So it's possible that we're going to go through all the concepts to the next week, but we're going to practice it in the, in the lab together. Okay? So you've got to be a little ahead, but because this is kind of a one, two, three sequential thing, I don't want, while it's hot, I want to uh, stick it. <laughs> okay? I don't want to, I don't want to uh, wait for it and, and let it cool down, and then you forget, and then so. Okay? So, what if I call a cat like an animal? First of all, how can I do that? How can I actually call a cat like an animal? You've already done that. You created O stream, and I wrote in a file with it. Remember that? You, have, you had workshops. In your workshops, you created output functions that printed an O stream. But I passed an OF stream to it, and it wrote in a file. Remember that? OK. So we want to do the same. How do we call a child with their parent's name? How do we do that? Two ways. Number one, use a pointer of a parent holding the address of a child. So if I, have, if I have a cat object, hold its address in an animal pointer, I can. Because cat is an animal, right? Because cat is an animal, I can point to a cat using an animal pointer. That's number one. Number two, you can have an animal reference holding reference of a cat. Same thing. Cat is an animal. You can refer to it as an animal, no problem. But there are consequences for that. So let's take a look at the implementation. And as, as you see over here, I'm calling base, reference, and pointer. What do I mean by that? This is what I mean. Let's take a look at the implementation over there. So I have my good old animal over here with all the things that the animal has. Now I have a cat with all the things that cat has. And as you see, this one actually over, uh, uh, did overwrite the move. So everything in the animal is improved in here. Okay. And if you look at the main, the difference is that <clears throat> I am creating a cat called Pepper in P. Then I'm going to say cat pointer C is equal to new cat fluffy. So dynamically created a cat, kept the pointer in C. Now I'm going to say I have an animal pointer that holds a new cat called Tom. I can do that, right? And I can create another pointer, point to the cat pointer, and I can create an another re animal reference, point to the cat, cat P. So as you see, <clears throat> The animal reference AR over here is holding the reference of the cat pepper. The animal pointer APR2 is holding the cat pointer C. And this cat doesn't even have a cat handle. This cat is dynamically created in an animal pointer. So there is no cat reference to this cat at all. Let's see what happens. So when you are actually running this program, did I set it as startup? Yes, I did. All right. So So it creates the cat, right? It creates uh, fluffy, right? And it creates Tom. So three cats are created. Right? Three cats are created. Three cats are created. And believe it or not, my mother is calling again. <laughs> All right. So I just mentioned her, by the way. Please, I'm teaching. All right. So I have three cats over here. 
Cat number one, that is pepper, is just a regular cat created with P, with the identifier P. Cat number two, fluffy, is a dynamic cat that is pointed by a cat pointer. Cat number three, Tom, doesn't even have a cat uh, handle. It's only handled by an animal pointer. Now, let's take a look and see what happens. So, first of all, and obviously I'm, I'm creating some pointers to show you that I can actually uh, point to a, so I can hold the address of a cat in an animal pointer, no problem, they're compatible. The other way I can, I cannot hold an address of an animal in a cat, it doesn't work. But I can hold an address of a cat in an animal. Remember, parents can always point to children. Po children cannot point to, to, to parents, okay? <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> I'm using a cat reference, and as I do, and you see over here, cat <clears throat> will act, Pepper will act like a cat, will move like a cat, will sound like a cat, and it's going to play. That's my Pepper, right? Are we okay with it? Now, I am going to use the cat pointer. C, dealing with a cat. Again, everything is good. Now, Fluffy is going to act like cat all the way through. Are we okay with these two things? We're okay, right? Now, trouble is, when I, act, when I call somebody by, their, uh, <clears throat> by uh, the parent name, so I have an animal reference over here. An animal reference of mine, if you recall, is holding the reference of Pepper. So as you see, animal reference is holding the reference of Pepper. As soon as I come over here and use the animal reference to tell to Pepper to act, Pepper completely forgets that it's a cat and it becomes an animal. Which means, <clears throat> as you see, it's going to move like an animal as if a cat doesn't exist. The object is a cat. You just saw it. But if, when you look at it as an animal, it cannot see further up. Always the methods are called that are closest to the type. If you have a base type accessing a derived type, if you have an animal accessing a cat, if you have a bicycle accessing a motorcycle, always the methods that are closer to the reference will be called, which means in this case is going to be the cat. It's going to be the animal. And the same thing like the other one, the animal pointer that I have over here, the cat doesn't even have a handle, so it's completely useless. It's not ever going to act like an animal. I just wasted uh, a cat because no matter what, that cat can never like a cat, act like a cat, and Tom will be always an animal. Now, take a look at this. Remember when I said when you delete something, it deletes in reverse order? Remember that? I am deleting the cat, the uh, dynamic cat. The pointer was cat, the object was cat. And as soon as I delete it, the deletion happens perfectly. First it removes the cat part, then it removes the animal part. But as soon as I come to the animal pointer over there, and I want to actually remove the cat that was pointed by an animal pointer, that's where only the animal part of the cat gets deleted. And I'm going to have memory leak. So if I dynamically create a child in a parent's pointer and try to delete, it only sees the parent part. It doesn't see the child part. Therefore, that's the part that is deleted, which is awful. We have to somehow fix this problem. And there is a, there is a very easy fix for this. So remember, the fix we are talking about only applies when you have a parent looking at a child, either reference or a pointer. If you have a child looking at a child, parent looking at a parent, we don't need this fix. Everything works perfectly.
But when you have a parent looking at a child, a base looking at a giraffe, an animal looking at a cat, that's when I need this fix. What is the fix? The fix is to make the compiler aware that, hey, there is a newer version of this function that you are calling. Look for it. If there is a newer version, call it. How do I do that? This is how it's done. And that's, this is going to be the end of the lecture for today. And I want you to go, please, I beg you, open these projects, walk through them, look at them, modify them, play with them, try to break them and fix them again. That's the only way you learn. Because right now, I taught you two weeks of material. OK? I want you to go through, but because they were so nicely fit back to back, I find it necessary that I want to do that. But, and uh, we're going to go through it over and over, so it's going to be hopefully uh, digested properly. Let me, uh, I'm upgrading the, the thing. I'm going to bring the other one up. Come on. There we go. And, oh, the other one is updated already. How is it possible? Okay. For some reason, I think halfway through the semester, I actually. Okay, I hope that it's okay. We'll find out. So I'm going to bring up the next project in here. So, I'm not going to go to the new one. I'm just going to modify this one, and I'll show you. So, one more time, um, I'm going to take all the stuff out, and I'm just going to focus on these. So, in here, I'm going to say, um, um, a.main, okay? And I'm going to change this main. Just, I'm just going to bring the problemat problematic part up and apply the fix. So I have over here an animal reference. So this is what I'm, I forget about all the, actually, let's bring this one too. So I only have <clears throat> a cat created an animal pointer, and I have the animal reference. So this one we do not need. And this is good. We have already done it. So this was our problem, right? So if you recall, our problem over here was that when I access a cat using the, did I do it right? Yes, I think I did. Yeah. So as you see over here, it's just going to act like an animal and not like a cat. What I can do is this. I can go to my animal, and I'm going to say, hey, compiler, if anybody inherits something from animal and improves, and improves the functionalities, I want the sound to be updatable. That's it. I just said, I want sound, sound to be updatable. I didn't do anything. It's the exact same program. Now, if I run the program, take a look at this. The action and move are still animal, but the sound is now meow. So it actually, when it's running, it looks, oh, this, this is virtual. First of all, it looks, is it parent looking at a child? Yes. Is the sound virtual? Yes. Do I have a newer version? Yes. So I'm going to call that. If any, uh, any of the things that I asked over here, one of them is no, virtual doesn't mean anything. If you have a parent looking at a parent, virtual doesn't mean anything. If you have a child looking at a child, virtual doesn't mean anything. If the virtual function doesn't have a newer version, virtual doesn't mean anything. The only way the virtual works is that first, a parent is looking at a child, 
Secondly, the function that is set to be virtual actually has a newer version. If that's the case, then virtual actually has something to do. Right? Now, the most important thing, something that you should remember today, till the day you die, you never create a destructor as is. You should remember all the structures that you ever create must have a virtual in front of them. Because if you don't inherit, it doesn't do anything. It's just there. So it doesn't hurt. But if you do inheritance, you're not going to, not going to have memory leak. Because now you are saying, I want the newer version of the destructor to be called. Now when the animal pointer over here, now when the animal pointer over here is deleted, it actually calls the latest version first, which means it kills the, anim uh, it kills the cat. When it kills the cat, automatically first the, the animal dies, and uh, first the cat dies and the animal. And that's what we have. See that? So no memory leak. So remember, from now on, at any moment, any program, the menu you are creating, if it, actually that doesn't need a destructor because there's no reason. But anyways, anything that has a destructor, you stick a virtual in front of it. It's safe to do so. It will not hurt, do any harm. It will not cause any trouble. The only thing that guarantees is that if you do dynamic memory, if, if you do inheritance, you're not going to have memory leak in case of parent looking at a child, okay? And that's called virtuality, okay? So, so now um, um, I'm, I'm just going to bring this back to what it was before. I'm not going to make it virtual, and I'm not going to make it virtual. Save it. Now let's take a look at the one that I have done over here. So Now, if you take a look at the animal over here, the animal has act virtual, sound virtual, the destructor object virtual, but not move. Therefore, everything that is working in here will be upgradable other than move. So now, if I run the program, you'll see everything's going to get updated, but not the ones that are not virtual. Are we okay with this? I'm going to stop right here. We can, I can teach more, but I don't want to. I want you to go actually. Because we have, really, we have time. Like, I can go five more minutes and do that. But instead of that, I'm going to go talk about utils that I did something over that I want to show you. Okay? So we're going to do that first. Uh, and the next time you're coming in, uh, please, I beg you, go review these before you come to the next class. Okay? Because uh, we have some important things to cover over there that uh, makes lots of difference. It's about virtuality, but we need to actually know that. Now, what this utils is over here. So if you take a look at utils over here, why the yeah, why the CPP is here? Get out of here! You're supposed to be down here. There we go. Okay, so now if you take a look at utils, I have lots of stuff over here in that utils for utils of mine. You can use them if you want to. Okay, I have lots of good stuff written in that utilities thingy, but <clears throat> now it's in a class called utils because I didn't want to just lay around. I want it to be object oriented. So. What do I do if I have everything in utils? I don't want to keep instantiating it. So what did I do? In utils.cpp, right at the top, I inherited, I created one and I called it ut. So there is an instance of utils file scope in here doing nothing. Then what do I do? <coughs> I'm going to come in this thing, and I'm going to say extern utils ut. And I'm done. So now what happens? That ut becomes available everywhere. You just include my utils, and you go ut.stringcopy. Ut. You can use all the functionalities that I have in these utils. Lots of stuff over here, actually. I didn't know I have this many things in here. Plenty of, and these are very, they're very cool things, like this get in stuff. They actually help you do the project much easier because they do foolproof. Uh, see, for example, in here, wow. Yeah, so that's a get int. I have another get int prompt. 
Wow. Yeah, so there are plenty of things over here you can use. I think I did the whole string header file in here <laughs> with some uh, <clears throat> nice read and writes are foolproof. So this one actually, you can actually get a C string dynamically, I believe, with this one. We are up to a delimiter. So anyways, <clears throat> uh, yeah. Are we good? I think we're good. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? We're good? All right. So that's our lecture for today. I would love to try to upload this thing, see if it's going to work, go in three minutes. That was pretty cool. Um, uh,